Today we're going to talk about marginal costing. Um, last time we dealt with issues uh, connected to the absorption of fixed overhead costs into uh, uh, in, into uh, on, on a per unit uh, basis into our costing uh, by unit. Today, um, with marginal costing, we're going to, the focus is going to be primarily on variable costs. In other words, um, the idea of marginal costing is if I produce one more unit of output and sell it, then I will gain the revenue, the selling price, and what it will cost me will be an increase in an increase in variable cost associated with that additional unit. Just the variable cost and the difference between the two is known as contribution because the fixed costs stay the same. Don't change in, in the short run. So let's just look at um, what the marginal costing um, method uh, brings in terms of its practical effect because this is um, essentially review for the candidate. It's a review of contribution, sales minus variable costs. Remember both production and non-production costs are taken into account. And just to put this, uh, to make this idea clear, let's have a look at a manufacturing company with a selling price of $120 um, dollars per unit. And the cost card shows direct materials, direct labor, and variable production overheads these are all variable costs, adding up to $72 per unit. There's also a variable selling cost of $2 per unit. Let's keep that in mind and look at two years worth of trading at the company now. Um, based on the following, actual production is incurred or is, is uh, performed of 1,000 uh, units, and actual sales achieved 950 units. Actual fixed production overheads turn out to be $16,500. In, in fact, over in both years, it remains the same. And the selling general administrative uh, cost. This, what we want to do is produce a profit and loss account, which reflects the facts that are shown here. In other words, uh, having sold, produced 1,000 units of um, product and having sold 950 units, how is our profit and loss account going to look like? Let's walk through year one calculations and then the candidate will have a chance to work out the year two calculations. In year one, 950 units are sold at a price of $120 per unit. That gives us revenue of $114,000. From this, we want to deduct the variable cost of sales. Variable cost of sales, we will do this by starting with opening inventory, which is zero in this case. And we add the production costs of what was uh, produced during the period. Notice that the uh, production costs relate to the production of 1,000 units. And the variable cost, the variable production costs per unit, according to the cost card, $72. Therefore, our production costs in year one is $72,000. In order to adjust uh, to adjust our cost of sales to the amount that's sold, not the amount that's produced, we have to deduct from our costs the closing inventory. In other words, the 50 units that we produced but didn't sell go into our inventory at a price, at a value of $72 per unit, and this is deducted from $72,000, so that our cost of sales is $68,400. And then, remember, the marginal costing method captures all the variable costs first, including the variable selling costs. These are non-production costs, but they also enter into our calculation here. 
950 units sold to two dollars is 1,900 units, uh, 1,900 dollars. Therefore, revenues less variable costs equals contribution 43,700 dollars. From the contribution, we can then deduct our fixed costs, both fixed production overheads and selling general administrative costs to arrive at a profit of $20,200. We will pause now so that the candidate can go through the uh, data relating to year two to build the profit loss statement following the same principles we have demonstrated for year one. Remember that the closing inventory, now the 50 units from the end of year one, becomes the opening inventory for year two, to which we have to add the variable production costs. There, that wasn't so hard, was it? In this case, we sold 1,150 units, give us a revenue of $138,000. But we only produced 1,100 units, therefore we actually had to, uh, so we, we sold the 50 units that were still in the inventory, which means that from the production costs there is no closing inventory to deduct. This is zero. There's nothing left in inventory. So the variable uh, costs will be 82,800 plus the variable selling costs. These are our total variable costs, and our contribution in year two will be 52900 The fixed costs we mentioned were the same in both years, and therefore we arrive at a profit of $29,400. This is the marginal costing. Let's keep these numbers in mind now and uh, walk through or tackle the absorption costing um, application or, or method in determining a... Uh, profit and loss account. Now, as we know that the, the absorption costing um, includes in the cost card on a per unit basis the fixed production overheads. This is an element we didn't have in the marginal costing card. Here $15 have been added to represent the share of each per, uh, per un uh, each unit of product uh, carries in the fixed production overheads. How, how is this number arrived at? Well, we need to scroll back up to the original story. Here are the original details connected to um, our scenario. And if we were to look at budgeted normal production level of $1,100, excuse me, of units, this is expressed in units, is associated with total fixed production overheads of $16,500. It's this relationship which forms the basis of the overhead absorption rate. Let's try that for a minute. If we have $16,500 of fixed uh, production overheads and we divide it by 1,100 units, which is our normal typical production level that will in the fifteen dollars per unit so on a normalized basis it's presumed that if we produce one thousand one hundred units we will completely absorb the sixteen thousand five hundred um, dollars worth of fixed production overhead that number the fixed overhead absorption rate is the definition here in the cost card. Fixed overhead absorption rate. And this is how it's used now when we do the uh, profit and loss uh, calculation according to the absorption costing method. Let's start at the top. The sales under both marginal costing and absorption costing is the same. It's the number of units sold in each year times the selling price of $120. So that's easy. Now we need to deduct the 
cost of sales, the uh, production costs, both variable and also fixed for the in, under the absorption costing method. The variable costs we know from the marginal costing was 1,000 units of production at $72 per unit, that's 72,000. And we also have to absorb here per unit for the 1,000 units produced $15 of representing fixed overheads absorbed. That makes 15,000. And then, of course, we deduct the closing inventory in the normal way, 50 units of production which are, remain in, in uh, inventory are valued at $87 per unit. Where does the $87 come from? It is the full or total production cost per unit, $87. It's the $72 of variable costs plus $15 fixed overhead costs. That's 87 and that's the basis for the inventory valuation. So notice the inventory valuation, even though there are 50 units in the inventory, we're talking about the same story as in the marginal costing case, but the dollar value of, the, of those 50 units is different. In the marginal costing, it was $3,600. And in the absorption costing case, it's $4,350. Now there's one more adjustment to be made, and that is since $16,500 of fixed overheads have actually been incurred, and we've only managed to absorb $15,000 worth because we only produced 1,000 units, how do we account for the difference? We have to make an adjustment in our statements then. We have underabsorbed the 15,000 folds short of the actually incurred $16,500 by $1,500 and we have to add this in as a additional cost element. It's an under, it's a result of underabsorption of costs. And by factoring this in, we end up with total production costs of $84,150 and a gross profit of $29,850. Notice the non-production costs and the absorption costing follow both the variable and the fixed costs. The variable selling costs and the selling general administrative costs follow after below the gross profit line to give us a profit of $20,950. The candidate is now um, invited to do the year two calculation following the absorption costing principle. Take it through all of the steps. There's a hint here. Uh, there is no over or under absorption as one can see here in, in year two. Um, that remains for the candidate to verify and see that you arrive at a profit figure under the absorption costing method uh, for year two of $28,650.